The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 8th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to know that Everything in life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we can answer that for you. Just send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices that we track trading to the downside. Dow's out 403 points, one at about one-tenth percent. The same for the S&P, or 52 points, one at six-tenths for the NASDAQ, 100, that's 251. One at six-tenths for the Russell, that's 32. Two and seven-tenths for the semis, that's 173 points. Uh, gold is off nine bucks. Silver's down 39 cents. That's a half percent and one and seven-tenths percent. Lights recruit is off 72 pennies, trading out at 81.23. Natural gas trying to take out resistance. That's the top of its daily profile. And the 30-year Treasury up one point. Watch the continued move higher to form that nice Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom last Friday. If we take a look at what's moving to the upside, you've got Eli Lilly up 80 bucks, 17, 18% move. That's a big move there. Novo Nordisk, 29 bucks, 17%. Uh, West Pharmaceuticals up $15.00. Sterling infrastructure, whatever that is, up 20% or 12 bucks. To the downside, it's booking holdings up about 2% or 63 bucks. Mercado Lube down about 3% or $38. Broadcom off 23, about 2.5%. BlackRock 23, three, over 3% there. And Asmill Holdings down 3%, $21 move to the downside there. So let's begin with, um, I, I guess I'll begin with the market breath. I, it's kind of futile, I would believe, but I'm sure we're negative market breath on the 30 minute time frame charts. But let's just make sure. We are for the S&P 100 above, 188 below. Let's just check out the NASDAQ 100. At least gives you a feel for where we're at market breadth wise In the NDX 100, this is the 30-minute time frame that we're taking a look at. And that is 11 above and 56 below. So that says on the 30-minute charts, the sellers are the ones with the advantage. Now, if we take a look at the... Uh, the other four time frames, 6240 daily and weekly. This is the S&P. Let me just do this first. Let's go to the NDX 100. This way I get it updated just to make sure. So on the NDX, we're bearish again for 6240 daily. We're positive on the weekly. When I say positive, 30 above, 24 below when it comes to the weekly time frame chart. So the NASDAQ 100 bearish for 30, 6240 and daily. It's only the weekly that still has positive market breadth. If we take a look at the S&P 500, remember that was bearish for its 30-minute uh, time frame. And if we take a look at... This update. Yeah. If we take so this is wow. What? Okay. Man, oh man. So I didn't Stevie didn't expect to see this. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, folks? You must be if you're watching the live stream. Let's update this just one more time here. Do it from NASDAQ. Okay. Go back to the S P five hundred. So the S P five hundred is bullish for its sixty and its two hundred and forty minute time frame. Wow, let's take a look at this. And the 60 is pretty good. Yeah, 210 above, 90 below. Wow. And the 240 minute chart, you've got 195, 185 above, 143 below. Well, how bad is it on the 60 minute chart? Let's take a quick peek here. 
210. No, that can't be right. Oh, it, it is right. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We already took like 210 above and 90 below. Wow. Okay. Um, hmm. If you're short, what this is telling you is be careful. This is saying expect, start looking at the charts for some potential type of uh, turn out there. Be, uh, at least that, that's how I would. I mean, it's market breadth positive. You saw me going through there trying to figure that out uh, just to make sure my eyes were not deceiving me. My eyes were not deceiving me. So let's immediately get over to our white background charts and let's start doing some analysis there. So give me a moment. It's got the NQ that's up first. Here. We're gonna first let me change the windows and then let's go ahead and I want to go right into the ES mini first because that uh, because the uh, market profile market breadth data. So this will take just a moment here to populate but I think this is the area for us to really be paying attention to. Now there are new profiles that are attempting to form i'll switch back i'll flip back to my other charts out here for the moment and uh just so you can see those new profiles actually the one in the nq went away so the one in the es and i expect that this is likely to go away but so the only new profile that we have out here right now is on the es mini the s p 500 and i'm going to turn off price just so you can see where it's at i mean you can visually see on the screen uh in my data box but i'll just simply turn off price here right now and uh, you can see you've got a new bullish structured profile now let's assume that this holds today price closes below it and you close below it tomorrow then a counter trend move would typically find resistance at about 45 24 out there if 44 97 10 holds at day's end uh, you'll know that a strong area of support is held. We had a bullish structure on the prior profile. I've got a bullish structured profile here as well. The NQ's profile seems to have vanished. That's gone away. Now, I'm using my advanced Doppler tool here uh, and uh, just to pick up what uh, what it's detecting technically what buyers and sellers are doing. So in the case of the NQ, we'll just stay here for a moment. You can see price likely targeting 14.865. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it closed below the bottom of its profile, 35267 likely telling us about a move down to the 34 823 or 34 69 619 level i haven't uh, put the weekly data on the uh, let me let me see if i can do that here while we are on the show live let's see where the bottom of the weekly is there's the bottom yeah, so it's the bottom that could be the target of the weekly profile for the uh, Russell 2000. Still no topping pattern for the equity future contract, but you close below 1942. That's a signal of a change in trend out there. That 1844 level becomes a price target. Now let's get back and go take a look and dive down into the ES mini charts, figure out what's going on in that 60 and 240 minute chart out there. What are we missing? If anything, what are we paying attention to? So on a 60 minute time frame, you can see got several A to B equals CD down patterns out here. So uh, I don't care how we draw them. There's, they're all over the place. So we don't have to really draw that in there. And what that would be telling us if we got a bullish reversal candle at 12 noon, uh, at just as we're about to get off the air, uh, that that would be a buy the D point pattern. That would be one. Let me just try to clear this up here if I can. Come on. That's going on. There we go. Let's get rid of that A to B equals CD pattern that was up there. Um, and I don't need the 4497 level. And you have bar number eight that's forming. So on a 60 minute time frame, and the 60 minute time frame tells us we have positive market breadth. You're in bar number eight. That says you could get a TD nine count bottom between now, this is the hourly chart, so let's say between 12 noon and uh, 2 p.m. Does that help you out? Eh, you want more help than that, I know that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. I'm gonna try to provide that more help as soon as we get back from this break. commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So uh, uh, we're, we're looking at the ES mini charts. Our focus is really right now on the 60 and the uh, uh, four hour time frame chart simply because when we took a look at their market breadth, uh, their TAS market breadth, meaning where price, where's price trading relationship to their profiles. For example, on the ES mini, you can see the profile levels at about 4507, 4533, 4554. When you trade below the bottom of a profile, which where support is, that's where the buyers are lined up, you know, that'd be considered bearish, um, most certainly. And uh, and that's what we've got on the 240 minute chart. That's certainly what we have on the uh, one hour chart. But what we look for there is when you're below those profile levels, any kind of a bottoming signal. And inside the uh, 240 minute time frame chart, you do have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. Many of you see a three drive to a bottom pattern that is present. Drive one, as example, would be the low here at two o'clock in the afternoon on August the third. Uh, then the next drive would be down to August the 4th at about uh, 5 o'clock, and then the one that is present right now. Now, the way that those patterns get confirmed, like everything else that Stevie does, most everything else, uh, would be a bullish reversal candle. Now, this current candle session is not complete until 2 p.m., so we're a long ways from there. But right now, still, there's positive market breadth on the four-hour time frame. So knowing that there's positive market breadth on the four-hour time frame, uh, you take a look at a two-hour time frame chart. It is formed bar number eight right now. Now, this is going to complete at 12 noon. That says that between 12 and 4, you could see a bottoming pattern. This requires, on a TD9 count, that is. Of course, there's a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. So a, bearish re a bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom there. doesn't mean things would be out of the woods. It just means it would be a counter trend move. That's all really that I'm talking about here right now is a counter trend type move. Uh, if we look at the... Um, and we talked about the 60-minute chart that had positive market breadth and that it is in the process of looks like looks like to me this is going to go ahead and form bar number eight of a TD9 count and the close of – now, the, the issue here, in order for a 60-minute time frame chart, because between 12 and 1, you're going to be wondering perhaps, will it conform – will it complete that pattern? In order for that to take place, price needs to close below – the close of bar number five. And it seems likely that that would happen. But let me give you that price level at one o'clock. If a TD9 count is going to confirm on a 60 minute chart, price must close below 4506.75. 4506.75. So at least you've got the parameters established for that. Now, on the intraday charts here with regard to the bottoming signals that we see, the first area of resistance there are really two levels. 4493 is one, the top of a 10 minute profile. And we've got that red oscillator and change line here. And that's at 4490. 
4491. Perfect. So you got 4491, 4493. We're going to call it 4493. If price can close above 4493, then the next price target should become 4498 to 4500. 4498 is the bottom of the 30 minute profile. 4500 is the uh, top of the uh, 15 minute profile. So those would be the parameters you'd be looking at out there. But first price needs to overcome. 4493. With regard to the downside stuff, we've already taken a look at that, right? We took a look at, or if you're saying, right, what do you mean? We took a look at that with regard to weekly profiles. Now, if you look up here on the, uh, so this is kind of interesting because this has been shifting. So this had just literally before it went to break out there, let me just check one thing out. I want to make sure I've got this setting set properly here, which I do. Uh, task boxes. Yeah, no, I don't. Okay, sorry. I didn't have it there. Let me change this. So now this should pick up that new profile as well, if it's still out there. It does. So it's got that new profile. And this this makes me believe that on the ES Mini, uh, because white background charts typically don't pick this up early like this, uh, but it, it has picked this up. And it looks to me like 44.95 is going to be your strong support level out there. So want to watch that. We're at 44.89. This is a daily chart, so it doesn't matter that it's trading below it right now. It matters where does it close this evening out there. And if price closes, then you would, above that level, then you're inside a bullish structure profile. You will know that price was not able to really bust it out to the downside. It just busted it to test out where buyers were located out there. Okay, I think that's about enough for the ES mini charts out here. Um, I'll throw up the NQ right now. There's a question inside the Tiger's Den about the TQQQ. And, and Jambalaya, the only way I could really answer that question is to do what we just did here with the ES mini and take a look at what's going on inside the NQs. And so I give you at least a play-by-play -play on the short-term uh, time frame uh, stuff out there with regard to where is price likely going to go target to the downside. Where's the downside target? For the uh, NQ out there, we gave you that number of 14,865, and that number uh, be uh, that 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 number's not going to change here. Um, not unless we see the NQ close above 15,586 at this stage here, and that, that doesn't seem like a likely possibility today. Now, as we start exploring the intraday charts here for the NQ, because I don't really know what time frame it is that you were talking about. Uh, if we take a look at the intraday charts, uh, still no bottoming. Uh, pattern that has been confirmed just yet, whether it's a 10 minute or a 15 minute or a 30-minute chart. Now, a bullish reversal candle on the 30-minute chart would confirm a buy the D point pattern. That would be the same on the NQ. So the NQ charts are not showing us the same patterns that we took a look at on the ES Mini. The upper panels, the two-hour, four-hour, five-hour, all those need bullish reversal candles. I guess the, the bigger chart out here is the 120-minute chart. That's also in bar number eight. Let's do this here. Uh, the ES was in bar number eight. The NQ was in bar number eight. Let's look at the 120-minute time frame chart, see if we have any kind of consistency here it's always nice to have a consistent message um so if you give me a moment we'll pull those charts up uh this should be set to the september contracts yeah they are so now we'll see uh, the es the nq up top and then down below well turns out yeah we are in bar number eight across the board on the two hour time frame charts now i don't have two hour taz market uh, breath uh, data uh, for you but I would be keeping, so those of you that are intraday traders, you're trying to trade both sides of this trade. Uh, what I'd be watching now would be uh, certainly the two-hour charts. You want to go look at those shorter-term time frame charts as well. But we do have out here is consistency. Now, remember, the bar that we're in right now, this is a two-hour time frame. It's not going to close till a 12 noon. So bar number nine will complete or should complete at uh, two, 2 in the afternoon. In order for that to happen, uh, that price must close below, bar number nine, that is, must close below the close of bar number five. And that seems like a likely outcome uh, to occur. I, the one that's closest for bar number, no, it looks like a, a likely outcome out there. Um, but I can't guarantee that. Uh, so it's 120-minute time frame charts. At least we've got that piece of it figured out that you really want to kind of focus in on. Uh, Jambalaya, again, longer term out here with regard to the NQs. Yeah, they're likely going to go target the 14,865 area. Um, but intraday, uh, it's a two-hour time frame charts, at least inside the NQ, that could be generating that bottom signal for you. So hope that helps you out. Hope that helps everybody out. Let's uh, take a couple of the questions that have uh, come in. We can always uh, continue to take a look at the equity future contracts. We can look at the Dow and the uh, Russell 2000. We do have a couple of questions that have come in, uh, and I want to get to those. The first one, I think, was a question from Jimmy uh, in the uh, Tiger's Den. If not, then I'm Oh, well, then it is a question. Stevie will turn it into a question, which was CRDF is the ticker symbol. And uh, CRDF, a nice day today. What is it doing? 
Uh, it's testing a prior level of resistance, which was an old swing point from back here on May 20, May 4th. And that swing point did volume there, about 274,000 shares. You're at 2 million right now. So even if price closes below that level, that level out here on CRDF is two bucks even, Stephen, price is going to be back up there. The price closes over that. That's a bullish thing. I don't see anything bear. Well, actually, a close above today, a close above the high from August the 1st. That's at 190. That would uh, then uh, confirm what would that do? That would tell us that we're headed higher as well. I think moving into that swing point with volume is really all we need to know. Where's your resistance area here on CRDF? 211. 211. That's the uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance area. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at SWIM and WMB. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, you got the uh, Dow trading down uh, 
344 points. S&P's off 45. NASDAQ 222. Russell's down 29. Gold's off nine bucks. Uh, we're going to go take a look at uh, swim out here. We're going to go swim with the sharks. And this is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. This is Latham Group, Inc. Uh, having a nice day. Trading out right now at about 451. I see on my other screen, 447. Uh, you'd love to see it close today above 429. That's a, a daily TD9 count breakdown level out there. Uh, if it closes above that, that suggests higher price. The weekly chart you can see is taking on um, both profile resistance. It's a brand new profile that formed just this week, Dan. So the sellers reside right now up at 439. And we're trading right now at 447. I know it shows 450 on my system. And 425 happens to be the T 435 happens to be the TD9 count breakdown area. So what you're really looking for, Dan, is you're looking for a close about 439. You can see a nice TD9 count bottom on the daily. Uh, two of them, three of them. You can see a nice uh, TD9 count erosion indicator bottom on the weekly time frame chart out there the same on the monthly so swims looking good you're just taking on some resistance right now again at the end of the week watch that 439 level you close above that and it should be off to the races to the upside so i hope that helps you out with regard to swim and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to uh, put in a request. Let's take a look at another request. This is from Jambalaya inside the Tigers. Then let's take a look at WMB out here. And WMB is Williams Companies trading out at 3427. So what do we have out here? Well, this formed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top two days ago. And it did that when it generated a bearish shooting star. It already had a TD9 count top, so it's a second top. Does that mean it's more important than the first one? No, it even has a sell the D point. So with regard to what Williams Company's charts look like for the daily time frame, it's looking like it wants the top. However, price still remains above the top of that bearish structure daily profile. And a counter trend move to the downside would find support at 3366. Could be 3379, but certainly 3366 if it was just a counter trend move. So what we have to say here, what Stevie will say, is that this is a neutral chart right now. Yeah, you got three topping patterns, but price remains above key levels of resistance. That was the top of that daily profile. Now, when we take a look at the weekly time frame, it's going to complete a TD9 count top this week. Kind of adds to the flavor that we're likely going to see a further move lower, but it's got to prove itself to us. And on a monthly time frame chart, you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation. The consolidation really in between the center of its bullish structure profile and the top, which is 2879 up to 3535. If you're asking what's the number that you really need to close above to suggest this thing wants to break out, I'd have to say it's 3535, the top of that monthly profile profile. So you've got a top in place on the daily, but it's a neutral signal. You're going to complete a TD9 count on the weekly. That suggests move back to the 3253 level out there. Just keep your stops in place. Hope that that helped you out with regard to WMB, Williams Companies. Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft. For Nancy, we're going to go take a look at those multiple time frame charts. She's trading us intraday. And as we take a look at the intraday, first let's start with the longer term charts. On a monthly basis out here, right now Microsoft is bullish. And it still has strong momentum. That remains the case as long as price remains above 317.79. We've got a TD9 count top on the uh, weekly time frame. Price right now is taking on on the bottom of its weekly profile. A close on Friday below that level, and that level is at 326.93, Nancy. That would suggest a move to 307.59, the TD9 count breakout area from a weekly time frame chart. Microsoft on a daily time frame has a confirmed Rogement indicator top. And today is really an important day for you. Why? Because prices testing a TD9 count bottom that formed three days or four days ago. That was trading on the day of uh, August the 30, August 3rd out there. And they close below that level. That level is 325.95. That's going to suggest lower price. Lower price to where? Let's pull this chart back out here. Can I come up with something for you? Where would that lower price be? Hmm. I probably have to go back to the A to B equals CD pattern out there and just extend beyond that on the daily time frame. Let's switch over to my other set of charts out there so we can take a look at that possibility. Now, we look at the intraday charts here. No bottoming signal on a uh, under 95-minute chart nor on a 130. It uh, needs a bullish reversal candle on the 65-minute chart. So watch the 65-minute chart. That's the only... That's the only time frame that I see a potential bottoming signal inside of Microsoft as we speak right now. So watch the 65-minute uh, time frame. With regard to the uh, daily, 
potential M- uh, Microsoft uh, A to B equals CD to the downside if, in fact, uh, price closes below its TD9 account bottom, which we won't know until day's end. Let me change screens out here so we can start trying to draw that pattern in and give you some type of price projection levels. And that's really one of the benefits of that uh, 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 AB equals CD tool out there. So now, the only valid A to B equals CD that looks like to me that I can draw, we know the top, that's easy. That's the high from uh, July the 18th. The B point that I'm going to use is the low from July 21st, and the C point was that rally. Looks like enough of a rally into July 25th, yeah, I was 44%, to now generate that A to B equals CD. So you're now at the one-to-one -one area out there, which is 324.59. Again, your key level to watch to, at today's close is still going to be that close from um, I'm just going to be the low from August the uh, second out there, and that low is at 325.95. So if you close below 325.95, odds favor you move to 317.61. 317.61 is the one to 1.272A to B equals CD. The caveat there, Nancy, is the first bullish reversal candle that forms, even if price doesn't get down there, would then generate a buy the D point pattern. So that's what you're on the lookout for. I hope that that helped you out with regard to Microsoft. Next question from uh, Joe and probably Charlie in Framingham, who called yesterday about the GDX. So Joe's asking the same question, which is where is the buy inside of the GDX? And he wants to do, use the nugget out here. We're going to take a look at the GDX first at least. Why? Because that's the better one to take a look at. So what do we know about the GDX? We know that the GDX is testing on a daily basis, is testing its road momentum indicator bottom. The question is, and it's rejected it so far, and it's going to form bar number nine today. It will form, I should take that back. It will form bar number nine today as long as price closes below 29.28. 29.28. We're at 29.11 right now. So that's going to be the real key out here. And that's what kind of makes it somewhat difficult, Joe. I'm going to answer the question for you. I'm going to uh, obviously give you the parameters because it could change at day's end. But first, with regard to testing that swing point, that road's momentum indicator bottom from June 29th, that had volume of 17.5 million shares. In the first two hours of trading, we're at 5.6. So you multiply that times three. We're coming in with volume, but it seems to be slightly lighter. It's not like it's massive volume. Now, you'd love to see price close above uh, this level here of 29, 28.76 and certainly do it less than 17.5 million shares. That is a possibility. Do you need that? You don't need that. You'd ideally like that because if you test a swing point, even if you reject it with volume, says that the next day, likely, you're going to be back down there testing. Of course, the GDX influenced by the price of gold and silver, so you have to take that into consideration. But you're going to get a TD9 count bottom. That says that the bottom should form today or tomorrow. If you reject that swing point, you close back above it, then I'd have to say that today, right now, is the time to go ahead and take that position inside of GDX. And because it's bar number nine, you can't just close it out if price closes below the low of June 20th. I mean, you could, uh, but it doesn't negate the current signal that would be in here, the TD9 count. When's the safer day to do it? Um... Let's try to answer that when we come back from the spring. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got to see your bread out there. You've got the Dow trading out 371 points. That's a little over 1% to the downside. Same for the S&P percentage wise, 49 points there. You got the NDX 100 down 240, 1.5%, 1.5% for the Russell. That's down 29 points. The summers are off two and six tenths percent out there. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to go back and take a look at the uh, GDX uh, charts. I'll pull up the uh, multi time frame set of uh, charts out there. So we're asked, trying to answer the question Joe wants to go along. What we know about the GDX in the daily time frame is we're going to form bar number nine, or it appears we'll form bar number nine today. That says a top should form today or tomorrow. We're testing a prior swing point with what seems like maybe lighter volume out there. So close back above 28.76 would buy a buy point. But when I look at the intraday charts here, right, on an intraday basis, if we're going to be see a bottom on a daily time frame, we should start to see the bottom on the intraday charts out there. As we take a look at these charts here, because price gap to the downside, we don't have any kind of a bullish reversal. Can I don't have a, a I don't have a intraday bottoming signal out here that suggests you take that long position right now. However, because we've got that bottom signal on the daily time frame, we really kind of need to do this the right way. Okay, Stevie, let's do it the right way. What is the right way? Well, first I'm going to close this set of charts down so I can free up a bit of resources. And then we're gonna go do it the right way. And what's the right way? The right way is go take a look at each of the charts, uh, or when I say each, the majority of the charts that make up the GDX holdings. And let's really focus on the top eight out here because they represent something like about 50% uh, of the uh, 40 some odd percent of the holdings inside of GDX. Now, if you give me a moment here, I'm just trying to refresh some of my screens here so I can, um, at least display this data for you a little bit better. So sorry about the housekeeping because I've got a bunch of these uh, charts up. You're only seeing one screen. All four of my screens are populated with uh, gold miner charts out here. So I just needed to do that. Maybe one more thing so I get a fresh screen. Uh, we should be good. Okay, so now let me change screens here for you. We're going to go to, again, the top eight holdings, and we're going to see what kind of signal information they're providing to you and I right now. So that should be should be this screen. Let me try to break that. Yeah, Newmont Mining. Okay, so let's start with the number one holding inside of the uh, GDX, and it's Newmont Mining. What is it doing today? It is forming bar number nine of a TD9 count. 
Okay, so uh, now not unusual with that being a number one holding is seeing the GDX doing the same there. So you might want to take a look at the intraday charts for Newmont Mining, but that's your TD9 count bottom. You have a uh, inside of a gold, G-O-L-D, you're testing the prior swing point. That prior swing point had volume of, let's just take a look at it, 13 million. Right now, today, you're trading into that prior swing point with 4 million. So it looks like it's similar volume, could be lighter. If it is lighter and you get a close above the top of that swing point, that would be at 1629. That'd be a test and rejection of swing point on letter volume. Uh, Franco Nevada, FNV is gonna form bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says a bottom forms today or tomorrow. AEM, no bottoming signal there, although price is trading back inside a bottom level that had a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Price would need to close below 47.84 to negate that signal. So that still remains in effect out here. Uh, WPM, uh, nothing uh, too bearish about this. Price is trading above the top of its profile. In the case of uh, gold fields, it's testing a swing point. The swing point had volume of 3 million shares. So far today, you're down with 2 million. So that's not the greatest looking pattern that you want. Uh, Royal Gold, uh, RGLD, is going to form a TD9 count uh, pattern today. It'll complete that pattern. It's coming back to its breakout level at the 111.42 area. And uh, AU um, negated its TD9 count bottom yesterday. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy. So I'll, I'll do it like this for you, uh, Joe. You want to take a position inside of the mining, uh, the GDX or the Nugget. Why don't you just uh, take a position in a couple of these stocks out here instead? Why don't you maybe focus in on uh, Newmont Mining, Franco Nevada, and Royal Gold, RGLD. Is it still Royal Gold? I don't, I don't recall uh, if that's correct. Because um, those are the ones that show the bottoming signal out there. You can always add a, a pattern inside. You can always add GDX or the XAU. But right now, why don't you go take consider the uh, individual stocks versus uh, the entire uh, ETF? Uh, so that's my that's my recommendation uh, to you. I've given you as much information as I possibly can. Uh, so uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, listen as well as uh, make that request. Uh, inside the Tiger's Den, let me just see if there was something that I've overlooked here. Just want to make sure I've gotten everything. Um, what coin? BGN, Digibytes, Buy. Steve, MDB. Okay. So let's go take a look at MDB stock out here. That's Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, Garo was trading that at one time. Uh, so he may be interested in that. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, that's what request that came in. Sorry, let me uh, move over here, MDB, and then I'll get to that request. I forgot I had one that came in by uh, my phone. I think it was from Greg. So we're going to definitely take a look at uh, that. Um, so MDB, MDB, Dan, looks like to me it's going to go target its breakout level of 365.11. You've got a TD9 count on the weekly basis. That 365.11 was the daily breakout area. 357.05 is support on the uh, weekly and 325.70 ish is the support level on the uh, monthly time frame chart. So, looks to me like it wants to get to the 365 level. If it closes below 365, you're focused on 357. If you close below 357, it probably gets all the way back and fills that gap and completes it and gets down to the 264, 273 type area out there. Uh, for this will be day number three to the downside for MDB. How do you know that, Stevie? I know that just simply by taking a look at this tool here. And I mean, three consecutive days to the downside. Um, so far on this move up here, even even after that gap up, we've only seen three consecutive days to the downside. So this is suggesting at a minimum that you could or should see some type of rally that lasts one or two days out there. But overall, MDB looks like he wants to go target 365.11 out there. So, Dan, I hope that that helped you out with regard to uh, that request. We did have a question, as I mentioned, came in from uh, Greg M. And Greg says, hey, hey, Steve, would you look at XBI for me? He trades the LABU off of the XBI. Oh, uh, you know, we might have a phone call out here. And if we do, um, we're not seeing any chart. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to change that. You didn't see any charts. Son of a gun. Okay, uh, that was a Stevie mistake. Uh, sorry about that brain fart. Uh, it happens, uh, you know, on too often. But I'm going to go back. I've just got to do this uh, to provide that information. So here's MDB, and thanks for letting me know. My apology. Here's your 365.11. There's your breakout area. I can't have too many screens. 
Uh, 35705, that's the bottom of the weekly profile. Green Oscillator and Change on a monthly 325. Those are your support areas. If price closes below the 35705, that's the bottom of that weekly profile. That's when you start getting the 264, 273 price projection areas out there. So I hope that that helped you out now this time with regard to seeing what's going on inside of MDB. And thanks so much for your patience. Now, Greg wanted to take a look at XBI. If we take a look at XBI, you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. That took place yesterday as that B point was passed with volume. That gets us down in the 76-ish area, 76.60 or so. I see at 75.91, I see a TD nine count breakout area. At 75.36 to 74.75 to 73.90, I see a whole bunch of support on the weekly time frame. So odds favor what XBI is doing here, Greg. It's gonna go target. We'll call it the 73.90 to 75.36-ish type area out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go take a look at Lightspeed Crew. This is for uh, Z inside the Tiger's Den. The question is, if price uh, closes above yesterday's high, um, where do we see Lightspeed Crude headed to? So a couple of things out here. The daily time frame for Lightspeed Crude shows a Rhodes momentum indicator top form yesterday. Why? Because price was extended. That was extended and followed the Rhodes momentum indicator rules that draws up a little black diagonal line. And we had a dark cloud cover, bearish reversal candle yesterday. So we have a top. 
What we don't have is we don't have levels of support being broken. And price right now remains above the top of its green oscillator and change line and the top of that slightly bearish structured profile. Its signal is neutral. John, to answer your question, if price takes that rosemontum indicator top out, where is price likely headed to? The first price projection area, I'll give you the area. It's between 85.59 and 89.23. And that is the bearish structured monthly profile level, 85.59 to 89.23. Now, if it does that, while it's doing that, it would be breaking out of the weekly consolidation pattern that's been in place for quite a while out here. And that says we get up past the 100 level over time, gets us into at least the 102-ish area out there. But let us that would be the longer term prognostication right now. Your question is if price is able to take out that high, where is really the next resistance level? And that answer is easy to, que uh, that question is easy to answer uh, that's in the 85.59 to 89.23 level. So I hope that that helps you out. Let's go back uh, real quickly here. Take a look at those uh, intraday charts. Here's the NQ on the NQ. It's really the ES mini that we wanted to take a look at. Let me see if I can get this populated here before we get off the show. While that's happening, I'm just going to peek in at the uh, Taz market breadth here for the S&P 500. Remember, that was the wild card. And it is still, I'll, I'll, let me just update it just to make sure. I put it on that screen, but uh, my screen sometimes goes nuts when I do that. It is still market breath bullish for the 60 and 240 minute time frame. Unless there's something wrong with this, and there's typically not. And that is really strange. That is a strange dynamic. Don't forget, you've got TD9 count bottoms that are going to form here on the 60 minute chart for the ES Mini and likely for the uh, two-hour time frame chart as well. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Have a terrific Tuesday. Please stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Take care and be safe out there.